<laughs> yeah, that's true. It's Bring back it right up. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, they have that little needle and pull it out. Make sure it doesn't bend. And they, they have like the, the triple zero one. It's like just a hair. We'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. We're really excited. My name's Amy Brooks. And I'm Judy Weinger. And we're glad to welcome Dan Fenelon um, from Madison to come down and talk to us a little bit as one of our featured speakers in the Sunday series. And also he was featured in our first show here for BIL Transformations. You can see his work here. And um, so we'll be turning it over to the second show, which will feature Billy Seckham, the Zen oil artist. And then to celebrate the Chili Fest, we're gonna have an open call for photographers to submit their um, photos on food. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, I, just a couple words about Dan. Dan was part of their first show, and his work has been featured in a lot of different lo locations. Um, recently, he was the New Jersey artist who created some ornaments for the Christmas tree in Washington, D.C., so that's really exciting. He'll share that with us, and we're really pleased to welcome you tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, well, uh, just to get started, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Um, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Montclair, uh, and I uh, went to art school up in Boston to the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. Okay? And, uh, when I was there, I really wanted to be an animator, you know, so that was kind of my goal. Uh, and they didn't have computers back then. So, uh, and my teacher was actually the guy who invented um, Xerox animation. And he did like all this stuff for MTV, like, you know, the guy walking on the moon and all that stuff, you know? So he was the guy that, that did all of that. And he, be, he was like a big mentor of mine. So I was like so influenced by animation and cartoons, you know? Um, but what I like to do is sort of um, kind of give you a background of where I started, okay? I started as a graphic designer. Okay? I worked uh, for a pharmaceutical company for about eight years, and that's where I learned how to use computers, okay? And then from there, um, I went into the, a sports marketing firm, and we did all um, work for sports marketing, okay? So I have some of that work to show you today, and we can get started. There we go. Um, so, I, I worked at a company, Frederick and Froberg, and, uh, and we did all, uh, back in the 80s, I mean, I'm sorry, back in the 90s, and we did um, a lot of work for Major League Baseball, okay? This is one of my logos that I designed for Major League Baseball. Uh, we used to do all the All-Star Game stuff and all the graphics for the All-Star Game. So here's uh, some of the street banners I designed for them, and we would do this every year for the, for the All-Star Game. It was a huge project. Um, and uh, then eventually, the guys that I uh, worked with, they, they left the company, and one of them went to work for Major League Baseball, and the other one went to work for the NHL. So I started doing work. I, I left uh, Frederick and Froberg and started freelancing, and then I started doing work directly for them, okay? So this is a logo. You might recognize the Stanley Cup logo. I designed it in 2006, and they still use my uh, illustration in all the, um, the logos today, you know, in the uh, shows. So. so it's kind of fun, you know. Uh, I just wanted to show you that I do more than just fine art. You know, I come from this kind of illustration background. So all of my work is very, like, animated and um, kind of like, like you know, uh, it's got a lot of graphic quality to it, you know. Here's another logo I designed in 2007. It's the All-Star Game logo. I uh, also have done work for the TV show American Chopper, okay? And, and they, they um, what I did was, uh, I was just talking to somebody about licensing before. They have this huge licensing uh, style guide, you know? So what I would, they would just give me like photographs of all the motorcycles and I would develop graphics that went with all the different uh, motorcycles that they had. And that was like an ongoing project. And they would take all these graphics and then post them online and, and uh, the, the um, Licensees would grab them and, and use them to design like t-shirts and bed sheets and all kinds of merchandise, okay? So it was, there was always a really fun project. And here's some more samples of that. So it was basically just this like vast clip art library that I created for them. 
Um, we've also done work for Mad Libs, okay? <laughs> and it was a great job. It, it's like, they used to just throw these things at me like, oh, we need Mad Libs um, uh, fairy tale. And I'd go, okay, and then send them back to me. These are great, you know? So it was like, it was like, always like spot on. It was like so much fun, you know? There was never like any bantering back and forth that you usually do. Uh, here's another one. This was, uh, this is uh, Mad Libs Extreme Sport, you know? So you kind of see this like fun, playful stuff that I add into my fine art too, okay? So, so I don't really, like to me, there's no difference between commercial art and fine art. You know, it's all just art to me, okay? And uh, so I'm not like really a purist like most artists, you know? Uh, then here's some stuff I, I did. Uh, I worked for Toys R Us for about a year or two years. And uh, they again, they would throw things at me like, "We need um, like boys uh, gift card cards," and, and I go, "How about angry trucks?" And they go, "Yeah, that's great." <laughs> Let's sit in the in the corner and draw like, "Well, how about monkeys on the moon?" Yeah, love monkeys on the moon. Who doesn't love monkeys on the moon? You know. So that's the kind of stuff I did for them. And oh, then I got into this whole Ed Newton, the Big Daddy Roth thing, you know, and, and where I was doing like they, really sloppy characters, you know, with the big bulging eyes and stuff. And it was really fun, like, because everybody else was doing, like, these little dainty illustrations, and I came up with like, a whole series of this stuff. <laughs> so it was like, they were doing the presentations, like, you know, this is, like, so far out in left field, you know. They loved it, though, and they used it. Uh, and then I would do the holiday shots for them, you know, so that's kind of timely, you know. I, for some reason, I always keep coming back to holiday. You know, I, I've done holiday work for several different co companies, so I guess I'm pretty good at it. Um, and then, yeah, then we would just uh, do different holiday themes. So they would, you know, these would be graphics that they throw around the store. Again, the same thing with Halloween, you know. And then uh, this is some hol uh, holiday stuff I did for a woodworking magazine. And this was great fill-in work because uh, they would pay me for each illustration I did, and then they would go into these woodcraft magazines, and, and woodworkers would cut them, cut them out, and, as, and use them as ornaments. You know? So, and but then it got to be like too many things. I was like, oh, gosh, I can't even think about Christmas again. You know, but unfortunately, I'll show you in a minute. That has changed again. Uh, and I've done stuff for Mattel toys. Okay, so these are really tough jobs. Okay, you can see. You know, and uh, everybody, I, I think people kind of get pissed off when I show them my portfolio because <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, you couldn't have done all this. You know, it's so unfair. Uh, and then more Hot Wheels. I love Hot Wheels. I grew up on Hot Wheels, and I ended up drawing them. You know? so, that's, uh, so that's some of the <clears throat> more um, commercial stuff that I've done. Uh, then... Uh, over the years, you know, um, I've been also working on my fine art, okay? I've had, uh, I think I'm up to like 14 one-man shows, okay? So an average about one uh, one-man show every two years, okay? Uh, this year I had two one-man shows, and I have one going on right now. It's at a new gallery down in Orange called the Firehouse Gallery, okay? It's a really cool space. It's like an old firehouse from the 1900s, you know? So they have like... Um, they used to have like horse and buggies in there, you know, so it's a, it's a very cool location. They've converted into this like contemporary art space. Uh, so I'll show you some of the fine art stuff. Uh, here's a, uh, I can, you can, now you can kind of see the influence of cartoons in my fine art, you know. These are, uh, I've done a whole series of these, they're about this big, and they're um, very detailed. You can see the detail better on the iPad than you can on the screen. Uh, they're more, like, even more detailed than this. But I do these sort of, like, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just fascinated by tribal art. I'm fascinated by cartoons and pop art and uh, abstract art. So, so it's sort of like a combo. And then I, then I did a series of works. Uh, this was for a gallery in New York. And they're very kind of, like, mandala-ish. Okay? And again, you can see better... Maybe afterwards we can flip through the iPad and you can see the, the re real detail in the work. You know, kind of zoom in on it. Okay. And this was a show that I had in New York. I had 10 pieces in that show. And I sold most of them. That was down in Chelsea. 
This is kind of like the signature style that everybody knows me for, okay? Um, and this is kind of what launched me into doing murals. And I'm, I'm going to talk about murals in a minute. But, uh, you know, I, I worked in this style for quite a while and uh, did really well. I had several shows like that. Then I went out to LA and, um, and I, was, I was trying to pitch one of my cartoon ideas, you know, unsuccessfully to a studio. But I, I walked by this place called Kid Robot, you know, and I, and I walked in and uh, I found these little creatures in there. They, they were called do-it-yourself toys, you know. And it, became, it started to become like this craze out in LA where artists were taking these blank do-it-yourself toys and then turning them into works of art, okay. And, uh, and it was like $25 for the dog. I was like, I almost didn't buy it. I was like, this is too expensive, you know? And I was like, oh, what the hell, I'll try it. And I made it, and I posted it online. There's like a blog you can post it on. And, and somebody bought it immediately. I was like, wow, that's pretty <laughs> impressive, you know? So I started making them, and I was selling them. Uh, it, it became like a, a little bit of a craze for a while, but now I think it's like waned a little bit. It's not as popular as it's been. It's, the funny thing is it's starting to like really become more popular here on the East Coast, which is the short day of the trend. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then it was back to, um, you know, doing some of my, my uh, more classic style. And uh, I've been kind of like um, experimenting with like a uh, little bit of futurism, you know, this idea of like techno, you know, plugged in but also this tribal theme. I did a whole series of stuff like that. Then I got a little more experimental and started doing this more kind of like rough, rough edge. Um, I call it the Cooney. A lot of people think it, it's like more graffiti -ish or Basquiat, you know. And I really got into doing that for a while. So I did a whole series of um, paintings like that. Okay. And they're really fun, you know. They're just like pure energy. You get to like scribble and sketch and do uh, layering and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. And I love Picasso's work. So this is sort of a mirror of the mirror, you know. Um, and then just more like, uh, you know, uh, very kind of free flowing fluid style. Uh, and what happened was um, I had a show at the uh, Visual Arts Center in Summit, you know. and. Like three days before the opening, somebody threw a rock through the window, the front door of the place, you know. And I was thinking, like, is that a, uh, <laughs> you know, is that a critic, you know? Uh, and and so there was like this big ugly thing in, in the uh, doorway, and the and the um, curator for the show asked if I would come in and just sort of like you know dress it up a little bit. You know, cause <laughs> actually, the students were drawing on it; didn't look too good, you know. So I came in just like an hour and did some of my artwork, very similar to this, very rough, you know. Uh, and then they, they had the show, the show came and went. And about three months later, um, I got a call from the museum and they were like, well, we're putting a piece of your work on permanent exhibit in the museum. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they said, well, the piece that was donated by the Visual Arts Center. And I was like, I, I don't remember, like, Giving them a piece of artwork, you know? and and, uh, and they, I said, send me a picture of it. And sure enough, it's this piece, you know. And they put it on permanent display. The piece, I was like, wait a minute, give me a chance. Here. Don't you want something else? They were like, no, this is the piece we're putting on, you know. And and uh, lo and behold, there it is. It's like you know, all of a sudden, like that's in the museum, and I catch the uh, the like the eye, you know, I catch the attention of the museum. Um, and one day, I'm working on a mural project down in. Uh, the Mockler Library, okay, which I'll show you, that's a fun, fun piece. And the, the director of the museum comes walking in, and she looks at the piece and she goes, oh, we want you to do a mural at the museum. I was like, great, you know? So, so that's how it happened. That's how I kind of, um, you know, jumped into that. So, so that's a little side story. We're still on it. So these are some of the, um, you know, again, I just work kind of very uh, randomly. Sometimes it's very tight like this, because these are new pieces, and then sometimes it's very loose like this, okay? And uh, you know, it just goes on and on, okay? So then it jumps back and forth. I don't really have like, you know, my intention is really weird, you know, like I can sit there for hours and hours and do something, 
and then all of a sudden I can't do it anymore. You know, it's like I got to jump into the next thing. So it's like this duality thing. Uh, then I've been starting to do this thing where I'm layering. You know, I, I, been going, I was going into New York for a while and, and looking at galleries, and, and actually I started to like the walls outside of the galleries much better. You know, like what I was seeing where there were, were post no bills. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. and these guys were doing this layering and this graffiti and this stenciling. You know, and I started, to, and I looked in, I walk in the gallery, and there's a pile of glass on the floor. I'm like, it, you know, this, is, this can't be the exhibit. You know? Yeah. And it was. So, so I started getting influenced by uh, what I was seeing on the street. You know, and I really started to uh, decide to uh, work in that direction. You know, and so here's some of the pieces from that. And then, um, then I got back into the vinyl thing, and and I, but I wanted to do something more like uh, epic, okay? So this was a pretty big piece. It's a Krusty the Clown bobblehead doll. A guy in uh, uh, Edgewater who runs a gallery there, he, I, was, I went into a storage space to grab some of my paintings, and, and this big thing was sitting there. He goes, he goes hey, I'm looking at it. At first there was a Dino the Dinosaur one, and I was like, I want that. You know, he's like, no, oh, no, that's for my, my uh, nephew. And then he goes, he goes, but here, you can have this one. And he gave it to me, and he said, you have to do something really cool with it. So that's what I ended up doing, the, the Krusty Shrine. Okay, the Krusty Shrine. And uh, that one's in the collection now. This guy, oh my god, his house is incredible. It's like uh, it's like you walked into the Adams Family house, but they were on crack. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can you imagine? You know, it was just jam-packed with totem poles and and he took, he had, he, he lives next to the Patterson, or like, I'm sorry, the Passaic Falls. So his house is like part of an old mill and there's this big archway and he put that right in the archway. It's crazy. And then, uh, then I got into this whole gladiator series with the dolls, okay. <laughs> so we're just going through dolls now. These are different, kind of like, uh, yeah, they're all just like mean little, like, uh, they remind me of uh, those monkeys from the Wizard of Oz. You know, they were like just yeah. such gnats, you know. Like one of them, you could kick their ass, but 10 of them would kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, then, uh, uh, then, yeah, some back to the, some more details. And now we're just going in different directions. So uh, so that's kind of like, uh, like a little synopsis of the different styles I work in, okay? And, um, then what I wanted to do was uh, show you an actual show that I just had recently. And if I can find it, so here it is. Um, so, so then um, I was, uh, Gallery Paquette, this is a recent show that I had. They asked me to um, you know, have a one-man show on their gallery. I've been showing there for a while, and they, he's been selling my work. And, um, and he was like, but I just don't want to have a retrospect. I want you to grab paintings in your studio and put them up. You know, I want you to work towards something. So um, I was out like uh, one night with one of my friends who's an artist. And, uh, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. He goes, he goes, you know, just pretend that you have all the money in the world and you just do what you want to do. And I was like, that's a great approach, you know, because <laughs> then there's no restriction, you know. So I decided to just go in and create this entire environment inside the gallery. And um, so, I, and then I was like, I want to showcase everything, murals, painting, sculpture, the whole nine yards, you know, just fully enveloped. And then I wanted to branch out a little bit and do some, um, uh, you know, video projection and, and conceptual stuff too, okay? So then what I did was I created this, um, this, I, I call it, oh, it's called the insta freak -elation, okay? <laughs> And, and if anybody was here last time, I told this story already, okay? Uh, and, and now Katie can verify it because she's here. But we were out, and, uh, and she's kind of actually giving me the eye now. Like, so I'm always talking about me, Dan, you know, my art. And, uh, and uh, so I was like, oh, I'm going to do this for the installation. I'm going to do that for the installation. And I'm going to do this for, and, and she goes, if I hear the word insta freak elation one more time, <laughs> and, and I was like, that's just, that's the name of the show. You know, that's it. So uh, that's how we came up with insta freak elation. And um, so here's the insta freak elation. And basically, uh, we'll just do different views of it, okay? So what I wanted, what I did was with the whole show, we went into the gallery, and we set the whole show up, and I took photographs of it. And then, then what I did was we took the whole show down, 
And I went into Photoshop and I photoshopped all the, photo, uh, all the walls. I, I photoshopped all the artwork that was going to be on the wall because I wanted it to relate to the artwork. And, and that was really the only way I could figure out how to do that until we set up the show. I didn't know what the wall was going to look like. So then from those um, Photoshop drawings, uh, I went in and I had a, a few of my friends help me. You know, we had a couple of pizza parties. We put a big drape over the front uh, door of the gallery that was all spray painted like from other projects. And people were like, what's going on in there, you know? And then we had this big unveiling of the instant regulation show. So that's, um, that's how, it, you know, the uh, droids were actually, that's how the walls were actually created. Uh, then I, and, and everything in the show is a found object that I that I have reconstructed. So, um, in fact, these these two pe this piece was and a couple of them were sitting out in the backyard. And Kitty's like, "What's got, what is all this stuff, dude? Like all this junk, you know?" And I'm like, "That's going to be a great piece of art." So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, uh, every and everything's found. I didn't I didn't buy anything for the show. I didn't spend any money. Okay. It was just all time, you know. Uh, a lot of the stuff was stuff from the garage. Uh, our, our son was using a wheelchair for a while, so he, we had a wheelchair ramp, but now he's not using a wheelchair, so we took that apart. So I used parts of all that stuff, all that material. Um, so there's like quite a lot of like uh, just found things. The uh, you saw the bass fiddle. My friend Bob Richardson had it in his garage, and I went over and I was like, "You got to give that to me." He was like, no, man. <laughs> like, no. But he had, obviously, he ended up giving it to me. I, I didn't steal anything. <laughs> so even these are uh, pieces. These are made from parts of the uh, wheelchair ramp. Uh, then parts of wheelchair, you know, everything. So um, there's all kinds of things. This was, uh, this is the only thing my grandmother left me, was that table. <laughs> My mom, my mom was like, oh no, I can't even believe you did that. You know? <laughs> and then I went to a gallery, and, uh, the, and the gallery owner had this, it's a coat rack from like the U.S. Army or something, you know, and, and I just loved the whole uh, dichotomy of the juxtapositioning of like the two different styles of, art, of uh, furniture design, you know. So I'm actually thinking about doing a, a bigger construction, like an Andy Goldworthy of furniture, you know. So then, uh, then uh, and even the canvases, like these old, these were recycled from old canvases that I painted over, you know. So it's all about uh, repurposing older stuff, you know. So these are some just some different views of instant regulation. Uh, this is an old toy truck I found on the garbage, and it just goes on from there. And you probably saw these probably repeats. Uh, this is like a cutout I did, and it's all. I took coupons from the newspaper, and it's the coupon dragon. <laughs> oh, then this is the Snoopocalypse. Okay. <laughs> so this is Snooky down here, canned Snooky, and then uh, this whole, like, um, you know, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It got a lot of comments. That's true. Nice. Yeah. I don't know. I, sometimes I just, you know, it's like this totem mask, sort of like apocalyptic totem. And nothing's more apocalyptic than Snooky. <laughs> so, uh, then uh, the Marcel Duchamp, you know, reference. <laughs> so I, I do a lot of like references to modernism in my work. That uh, people, you know, they, like people who are into modern art would pick up on it and, and realize the uh, sort of tongue in cheekness of that. And then uh, this is just, uh, you know, again uh, recycled uh, sketches that I collaged in together and then built this construction out of that. You know, then sort of like spray painting and paint together. And here's a different view of the uh, instant regulation. Now this show has moved down to the firehouse down there. I don't have any pictures of it down there yet. But uh, I'll be getting some soon. And then this is just an end of that. So you get like different angles of some of the stuff. And that's it. Goes on and on. <laughs> All right, that's the end of that. Okay. So from there, what else has happened? Uh, well, this year. Oh no. Okay. So we're starting to talk to you a little bit about murals. Okay. And um, some of the mural projects I've done. Uh, the first mural that I did 
was uh, back in 2007. Well, actually, the very first mural I did was inside the Dirt Club back in the 80s, okay? But that one was uh, lost to history, okay? Uh, so then uh, back in 2007, I entered a contest. Uh, Valley Arts was kind of getting off the ground. There was um, Arts Unbound had just opened down there, uh, and they were looking to do a mural on the back of their building, okay? So I entered this contest, and I won the commission. I had never really worked on anything that big before, so I was a little bit freaked out. Uh, but it, it seemed to work out perfectly. You know, I, you know, once you get the grid in place and start building big, then you, then you just learn as you go. You know? so, I, so I ended up doing that mural. It was a south-facing wall in the middle of August. Right? <laughs> so I'll never do that again. <laughs> uh, but it was, a, it was a fun start. Uh, then, you know, and it was a, a mural, it was, it was uh, on, on a wall going down a one-way street that went this way. Okay, so no one can see it. But it's, uh, it's, it's kind of called the hidden mural, you know, so people um, have gotten to know. But then, then we found out that if you're going into New York on the train, if, if you look out the window to the left, you can see it from the train. So it, like, worked out really good. And everybody goes, oh, you, you're, you know, that's your, we can see your mural from the train. I, I meant that to happen. <laughs> so, so that was the first mural I did, um, and from there I started. Um, I, I started working with the Arts Council of Morris area and uh, doing art artists in residence, where I would go into schools and do murals with the kids. Okay, um, I have some examples of that, uh, and then from that um, came the museum mural at the Montclair Art Museum, and then. Uh, then I too went out to Art Prize and uh, did a mural out there. It took uh, about uh, I spent about two months out there, okay, and I did a large mural on the side of a building. Uh, I'm going to show you that picture right now. Okay, this is the largest work I've ever done. Uh, it's 120 feet long by 30 feet high. Okay, uh, I did this mural by myself. Okay, let me go back. I have a step by step on how this one. This one was created uh, on my own. This is the beginning of the mural. Okay, so what I did, I came up with a whole sketch for it, uh, and then and then uh, got out there and just started working on it. They uh, somebody donated a cherry picker for the project. Okay, so I just got up on the wall and started drawing, and this is what came out. I mean, I, I had drawings and everything, so it was all and it was all scaled out. And uh, they had a dental clinic in the place. <laughs> so if you're wondering what that is. Uh, and, and also, uh, the, um, the, the reference to the Native American art was uh, the, the uh, Ottawa tribe, or the Ottawa people, uh, have, were the original settlers of Grand Rapids before it was ever Grand Rapids. So I wanted to like pay homage to them. you know. So I, I, I used some, uh, some Native American imagery I actually, um, uh, one of the um, tribal elders came one day, and he and he and he was and he came and you know I talked to him and got to know him. He was a really great guy. And they were very appreciative of of, the, of what I had done for the tribe, and to, that somebody actually remembered. You know. um, so then then the, I did this mural in four different parts. So I treated it like four different separate murals. Okay. And so part one done, move on to the next part. And then it just sort of uh, is step by step, you know, so it kind of explains itself. Here. And it keeps going on. Oh, there's the news um, lady from Fox News. <laughs> Fox. Okay. Yeah, she's, a, she's conservative. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, and there we are. She, she got up on the lift and, she, and we got up. And she goes, come on, take it down here. Yeah, no problem. Not, not everybody can handle the lift because it sways back and forth, you know. And uh, there, there they are interviewing me. So, uh, and then uh, this is a continuation of it. And then see, it slowly comes to life. And every day was like this that I was there. It was great. The, the people I, and the day I finished the mural, there was like a like a squall came like through the town. It was like great. So, uh, but you know, I had to maneuver around in this thing. And, you know, I put, set up these little things, and cars were always honking at me, like, 
I was taking up too many parking spaces. <laughs> the, the, the trials and tribulations. Uh, and then we just keep. Oh, then then the final wall over on this side. And there. Oh, and then uh, Repco Light Paint donated all the paint, so I, you know, promoted them. Messed up a lot of their shirts. <laughs> and then uh, here it is. This is the uh, final detailing of it. And it's a uh, fun. It's a fun mural. It's in a kind of like an up-and-coming arts center in Grand Rapids. Yeah. And then I ended up uh, in the top 50, which didn't get me too much. <laughs> and that's it. We'll just go through that real quickly to the end now. The uh, slow progress. I think it took, it took less time to do it than actually go through the slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, any any kind of project you do outside, uh, you know, has the same life expectancy as uh, a house. You know, so whatever your house. You know, obviously, if it was if the paint lasted longer, the house everybody would use this kind of paint. You know, to paint their houses. Um, did you have a question? How long did it take? Well, the the entire from start to finish took twenty seven days. It took twenty seven days from start. To and I was like, it was like seven o'clock in the morning till dark. You know, I worked every night, Sunday, everything. You know, so it was. Uh, but you know what? I loved it. I loved doing it. It was a great experience. You know? So this is up on the lift, and then uh, had a photographer had snapped some shots, and I and I got them for him. So these are two final. So that's the Grand Rapids mural. Okay. Um, then I get back to New Jersey. And I enter another contest. Um, this one was going to be for a mural down in Newark, OK? Uh, the, the Barrett Foundation down in Newark um, had uh, set up a contest. Uh, the Dalai Lama was coming to Newark to, um, to the Newark International Peace Festival, OK? I'm, yeah, I'm, the, I'm sorry, the Peace Summit, not the festival. And, um, and they wanted to welcome him into town. This was his route into town. You know, the, the, Motorcade was going to pass by there, so they, um, you know, I, you know, I submitted a design and they accepted it, and uh, so I got to work on this project. Now this is a, this project is a little bit different than uh, up to this point. This was different than any project I had worked on. Uh, they wanted to get community involved in. Okay, so uh, the object was they wanted to have uh, over 500 kids from the city of Newark uh, help to paint the mural. Okay, so. Uh, I worked with another woman, Sue Daly. She was uh, she's familiar with the Philly Art uh, Mural Project. Okay, she has worked with people there, and um, together we um, uh, you know uh, did the whole project. And we, uh, we went into 500 different uh, I'm sorry, 17 different schools, and had over 500 kids help us. Okay, so um, this is the first part of the the, the mural. Okay, it's. Um, this is just priming the, the panels, okay? Every panel is uh, created on this stuff called Kellen, okay? And it's like using the fabric industry. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's like a non-woven material, so it won't, it won't uh, buckle or, or shrink, okay? So there, we ended up creating 150 panels, okay? And then this is, um, what we did was we projected each panel onto, uh, you know, we projected each frame, each uh, panel of the mural frame of the uh, Pelin. And then here's, uh, we, we were using, on that project we used glassine, now, now I'm using an LCD projector. And then we went into the schools and just became a giant paint by number, okay? So that was the idea. And these are some uh, pictures that the photographer took. And, uh, and here are the kids working on it. Now th this is each panel, and you see we have a color code with each panel, okay? And, and every, every uh, part of the mural was also color coded with a number. And here are the kids working on that. And then you can see this is one of the painting kits. Okay, so we would we divided it up into like several different painting kits, and then they would each get a, like a little cup of paint to, to do their their section. Of it. And then here is the, the mess. The mess of the and uh, here are the kids working on it. 
they didn't look too happy in that picture, but <laughs> they were over there. And we had a happy kid for this is they they had a blast. It was great. We just had a great time doing it. Everybody was into it, you know. Uh, and then they, uh, the Barrett Foundation has about 4,000 square feet of space. They gave us 2,500 square feet to work on, to lay out the mural, and that was only about half the mural, okay? So here we are in the studio laying out the mural, and everything had to be uh, numbered, coded, you know, it was, uh, you know, and, and we, had to, we had to set them up in a certain way so that when we brought them on the lift, we could just take one off at a time and apply them. So there was really a whole kind of thing to it. And then we used a scissor lift on this project. It's 50 feet high, okay? So this was a little hairy. You go up 50 feet and the thing sways back and forth, you know? And, uh, but it was really fun. It was great. Every, and then immediately people in town started reacting to it. You know? So this is, um, this is how it lays out. You can see it's kind of like wallpaper, okay? I started in the middle because I needed to register with that window, okay? Because if I was off from that window, it would be completely off. So I, would, I didn't mind if it was off on the sides, you know, because we could easily correct that. And, and the great part about it was we got up to the top, and I, and I laid the last piece in it, and it was, like, perfect. There was, like, not one inch in either direction, you know. And I was like, how did that happen? <laughs> but, you, but with these bigger projects, you can have, there is room for, um, you know, there is leeway. So you can see, you can kind of see, well, maybe not on this one, I'll show you the next one. Uh, there's, and there, it's just continuing. But then you kind of see the scenes here, you know, that get created. And there's like some registration that's off on some of the panels. And then what we do is we just went back up and uh, touched it all up. So once you get that basic shape down, you can recraft it any way you need it, you know, and make it correct. So that's exactly what we did. And there's me at the bottom of the, and then uh, we had a, an unveiling of it, um, and they had like a, a, a gospel band. The mayor came. Uh, we had dancers from Arts High. It was a great event. It was really fun. Uh, these were all the people that were involved with the project. Uh, it's on the side of the Integrity House. So we had actually um, uh, people from the Integrity House helped us work on it. Mayor Cory Booker came and spoke. That was, that was fun. He was a great guy. And then these were all the kids that worked on it. They came to the event also. So that was really fun. And that's, uh, that's the mural. Okay. And um, so I don't know how long I've been talking for. <laughs> Is it a long time? Uh, I, got a, I mean, I have a couple other things if you wanted to. Or I could uh, open it up to, uh, to some questions. Oh, you know, here's one just uh, very quickly. Um, you know, I was talking about my school projects, okay? And this was a, a mural I did at the Holland Brook School as an artist in residence, okay? So this is basically the same idea as the Newark mural, except scaled down uh, a lot, okay? So uh, usually I work uh, with a school, um, you know, anywhere between uh, 60 to 300 kids on a project, depending on, on what they want to do, okay? And who they want to get involved. And, uh, and then it starts off the same way. It's the same thing. We do these um, sort of paint by numbers, okay? We pick a theme, and then we go with it. And this one was outer space, okay? It was actually bobcats in space, okay? <laughs> so you'll see at the end. Uh, and the principal is a really phenomenal man, and he, he loves space. They have all kinds of, like, they build satellites and stuff, so it's, it's really cool in the middle of the hallway. And you can see Jupiter there kids working on it. And this was um, also, you know, part of the project was, I, I like to incorporate like um, pieces of the architecture. So this was going up the stairs. So the stair rails were like a part of a bucket loader. That also, and you'll see at the end. So that was like the, the, the extension of the bucket loader. So I'll show you. <coughs> and then the kids are sanding it down. We had to sand it and paint it. So we got them uh, working on that. And then again, putting it together like a puzzle, you know, which is always a lot of fun. I have the kids like, you know, putting it together on the floor like a puzzle. It's real fun. And then, uh, and then this is the application going up the stairwell. <coughs> so here it is. And you can kind of see the mistakes they make, and then I just go and touch it up. But sometimes I leave the, the mistakes and the randomness, you know, because it's kind of interesting too. 
and it kind of shows that like there's a little little bit of grit to it, and kids worked on it. So here's the uh, final one there. Yeah, and this guy, this poor guy's left back in the capsule, you know, he's like in shock, like how did you leave me here? And um, and then let's see, oh here's the uh, this guy's a cool cat. Yeah, and then uh, this side, this is where the bucket loader is. We hadn't installed the railing yet. But the railing goes up there and it's kind of like holding the bucket in place. I gotta get a picture of that. And that's uh, so that's the um, that's one of the school murals. That's just an example of one of the school, school murals. Uh, which kind of brings me towards the end. Uh, there was just one more thing I wanted to talk about, and it was um, my uh, apparel business. Okay. Uh, I started a, a business uh, with a business partner, and uh, we designed lacrosse clothes for kids. Okay, so this was kind of born. Um, I think Amy was asking where Wave Dog came from. Okay, and and the original origins of Wave Dog were back in the '90s. I was doing some graphic work for my my cousin, who who was an internet service provider, and and he, and he said to me one day, he goes. Hey Dan, do you want a website? And I said, What's a website? <laughs> and he goes, He goes, Just give me a name. And I said, uh, You know, how about Wave Dog? And he typed. He goes, Yeah, that's available. And, he goes, and, and back then, like, domains were like three hundred fifty dollars. So he was like, I'll pay for it. And I was like, Cool. You know. So he ended up. Uh, I ended up getting the name Wave Dog from that. You know. And then one of my friends was like, Well, what's Wave Dog? And so I made like this little animation about Wave Dog, about this dog who runs away from home and enjoys a rock and roll band and, and likes to surf, you know. And uh, and that just kind of, like I pitched that out to people in Hollywood and stuff, it never really went anywhere. I, you know, I got into, uh, somebody optioned it off for like three years and then, you know, then it kind of died and um, and then it, it got reborn again as Wave Dog Apparel, okay. So we started uh, this, this company where we uh, make uh, actually lacrosse clothes for kids. So these are some of the designs that we do. And, and if you, anybody's familiar with lacrosse, you know, the kids who play lacrosse are a little bit kind of like, I know they're kind of tribal, skateboard, hippie, you know, it's kind of got that vibe to it. So kind of the more outrageous, <coughs> it's, it's all about self-expression and, and, you know, some of the kids wear feathers in their hair and paint their helmets. So that's kind of where Wave Dog was born. And then these, so, so now, right now we're in 16 different stores some of the samples of our product. Okay. And you know, I don't just do wave dog my own style, you know, because we really, really want to like, uh, you know, have a broader base. So, uh, you know, we do other fun things besides the, uh, but here's just some samples of the, uh, the crazier ones. Okay, yeah, the fun pennies. We do socks, I have socks in the back, great stocking stuffers. <laughs> <laughs> so here are some of the pennies. And uh, we also do team uniforms. This is almost got a uniform feel to it. But we do do team uniforms too. And then, oh, this is the heritage, uh, the heritage of the sport, which was a Native American sport originally. And they used to call it Tawirathon and Kobach Tali. And the Iroquois Indians played it, and sometimes they would play it to the death. You know, so it's actually got some pretty uh, historic roots. And it kind of goes into the vibe of what I'm doing, you know. And then, uh, you know, then we've got the All-American ones. And so, so, so we go in every direction with it. And kids love Argyle, so I'm kind of doing these knockoffs of uh, Argyle, but like in my own tribal style. And that's, uh, so that's kind of, uh, we're coming towards the end of the adventure here. <laughs> oh, skulls, kid love, kids love skulls, you know. <laughs> I like skulls, and uh, and then of course you know Irish man, you know anything with a shamrock on it. Man. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, then yeah, just work. These were some. Oh, then we're getting to the more preppy kind of thing. You know, so we do that too. And then back to uh, in, this is Inuit symbol. And uh, that's about it. So uh, if you want to, I can open up to some questions. If anybody has any questions, yes. Um, I was wondering, where does the funding come for those murals? Uh, yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, different sources. Um, you know, uh, 
Barrett Foundation um, got private funding from several different, uh, you know, funding streams. Okay, so they got some uh, uh, probably state money, and then and then also uh, the Interfaith Coalition chipped in some money and some other organizations. So through private donations, you know, yeah, and and then sometimes through grants, you know, through uh, arts grants. Yes. How long in total have you been painting? Oh, uh, my whole life, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what my, you know, my mom told me. She said, "Oh my God, you know, you've been painting ever since you were born." You know. But I have this picture. She framed like when I was in kindergarten of a snowman next to a tree. And it's like horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like any kid painting. So, I, kind of like when I got serious was, uh, you know, when I was in high school. You know. That's when I really like it started to occur to me that like I had a propensity to do this, you know, and um, and then I went to art school and I thought like because when I was in high school I was like I was like the class artist so I did the yearbook cover and the mural in the school and all that stuff and then I got to art school I was like oh crap <laughs> there's so many talented people you know so uh, yeah so it's, that's when I got serious you know I just never. There was no consideration for anything else. Like my, my dad had his, a business that all well, you know the family went into, and it was just like never even a consideration that I would ever go into that business. You know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your process? Like, you know, how do you start? Um. Yeah. It's always born from something different. You know, uh, inspiration can come from anywhere. You know, it comes from a glass. You know, it's like. I don't know. Some, you know, sometimes I just look at something and and then I combine. I like to combine things. I know that. So I like to combine different cultural icons. Okay, and I and I love pop art and I love uh, modernism. So so uh, you know, I used to try and copy Picasso or or try to you know do an abstract you know like a Clifford Still or something. And then I was like, but this isn't getting me anywhere. So I got to do my own thing. And uh, and then I and I really loved Egyptian art and you know Aztec art, so I was like, you know, how can I make all of this work together? You know, like because I'm living in a modern world, so I thought of this idea of modern tribalism, you know, and that's kind of where it gave birth to that. And then from that, you, I mean, there, that's an endless source. You know, it's like you go to any museum, you go online, you know, it's like it's all around you. You know, so so inspiration is from anything. You know, anything you want it to be from. It could be from tragedies, it could be from, you know. So, I get, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun question, though, <laughs> you know. Yes, you had a question. When you're doing an outdoor mural, how do you decide whether you're going to paint directly on the surface, like you did the Grand Rapids, or, or those, those are Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, usually, there's a couple of different <coughs> factors, uh, you know. Uh, well, funding, you know, the, the Palin costs a lot of money. So, so to do something like, like on the scale of Grand Rapids, it would be like, you'd need like, you know, $2,000 worth of Palin alone, you know. So, and then, you know, uh, the surface was fine. They had just primed it, so it was like ready to go. So sometimes you look at a surface and say, well, you know, either, we, either you spend $3,000 to, to prepare this, or we can just use the Palin on it. And then the other factor is, if it's community involvement, the pellet is much easier to use because you don't want people up on the scaffold, right. you know. And uh, so that's always like a consideration when you're doing something that involves um, public, you know. Does that last longer than the whole thing? Uh, well, we use this stuff called Nova Gel, which is like, it's like wallpaper paste on steroids. And it's like, it's like it will last. Yeah, it actually helps uh, protect the surface a lot, you know. So it's like it's like putting like a jacket over the, the top of a surface, you know. Um, how long it will last is anybody's guess. Yeah. I, we're we're looking probably the total lifespan of a mural is your max fifty years. You know, they end up looking like those old signs you see down in uh, in, in North or you know you know the old Coca Cola signs that wear down after a hundred years. You know, and if they don't get um, restored, you know, the weather will just and the, and what happens is, it's not the rain coming on it; it's the moisture from the from the brick or the mortar pushing out from inside. Yeah, it just pushes the paint right off of it. You know? So.
So that's that's there's nothing you can do to that about that. Yeah. I'm just very curious. <coughs> so with school projects, when you when you work with school kids, mm -hmm. do they usually reach out to you or do you reach out to them? Oh, uh, it's all been word of mouth, and and uh, they've been reaching out to me. Yeah. So I haven't had to do too much advertising. Uh, the Arts Council has a, um, uh, it's an artist showcase every year. And, I, and I, I go to that, and all the people from the PTA come, and, and everybody gives a demonstration of what their art and education program is. So that's the, the one place where I you know, get work. But then the rest of it is just like, uh, you know, I was just at a Thomas Jefferson School in Morristown. And I did a mural. Now, now Alexander Hamilton wants to do one, you know, because the principals, you know, came over to the schools and hey, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> it's like we need one of those. It's like yes, you do. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's how the, um, the school projects are. And use always. I mean, not usually always. They have me come back and do again, do it again. So I'm, I'm, every school I've gone, I've done at least two of them so far. And the yeah? school project. Yes. Does the, like the PTO raise that money? Or? They do. Yes. Yeah. PTO will raise the money. Yeah. That's usually how it happens, and 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 it becomes a legacy for that year. You know. So so it's like the students of 2012 uh, PTO. You know, and and so they want to leave like something you know that will last in the school. And, so, and that's the idea of the project. Yeah. Sort of ballpark you can give us for something like that, like how much? Uh, well, well, yeah, I have a fee, you know, a fee structure and everything, uh -huh. um, you know, and then depending on how big the scope of the project is, how many, how much the supplies cost. So, you know, uh, figure is four fifty a day, and then whatever supplies cost, you know. So if you want to, depending on the size of the mural, that's good. Yeah. So. And you work with the kids to decide what they're gonna come up with, and then you design it. I, yeah, no, yeah, we work with the school, and then the, and then the kids will get involved. They'll give a bunch of sketches, and I'll take their sketches, and I'll make some sort of like order out of it. You know, so it's fun. It's fun. They, you know, yeah, it depends on the theme. Like like this one, I I just finished it yesterday at the Grayman School in Fairfield, and they, and there were, theirs was the sky's the limit. So like I did a whole like uh, thing of kites, you know, like in the air, and then like growing a tree, and and they um. The kids there uh, have uh, behavioral problems and autism, so so there were some like uh, iconetry that revolved around self-reliance, you know, coming to uh, come going down a path to uh, self-reliance, you know. And 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 I did a very experimental project. I don't know if I have it on here. Uh, no, I don't. Let me maybe. Because the, the principal of that school, yeah. oh, I do, yeah, I can show you this. The principal of the school, um, you know, the, the whole spectrum of autism, you know, it goes all the way from Asperger's to like really extreme cases, you know. So I was working with peop uh, people on the lower end of the spectrum to do the mural, but, but the principal wanted to involve some of the kids <coughs> who were, um, you know, a little bit uh, on different part of, you know, like more extreme. And so we did a very experimental project with them, and uh, which was really exciting to me because I don't get a lot of opportunity to do that, you know. So I'll just show you some of that stuff here. If I have, I can get up to it. I got like a thousand pictures on my photo <laughs> stream. <laughs> it's like really confusing. But So what I did was, um, you know, the, the tendency is for the aides to kind of control the kids and like, you know, draw the flower, draw the, and they, and they don't want to do that. They just want to do their own thing, you know. So I wanted to, uh, to um, experiment with that. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's some of the pieces from that. So what we did was uh, I just let them, like I would control the color and then, and then maybe tell them how to pattern something, but then let them go and do their own thing, you know. And this is what they were coming up with, you know. And, and so they're going to do a whole uh, panel. We did 12 panels. And these were the different um, things that they came up with. I know. And, and so they're going to do a whole mural just with that, you know. And this is actually, this is the most exciting thing I'm doing right now. You know, this is really something that I want to uh, pursue more. You know, because uh, the, the bliss, and, and you know, the truth is that probably 
they, they wouldn't even know which panel they did or, or, you know, and they're so in the moment, you know, but they're so blissed out while they're doing it and, and to have the, the permission to like, to be let go to do it and, and like not be controlled like this, you know, it's like, because the aides don't really know about art and they don't understand abstract art. So that <laughs> if somebody's scribbling on a page, they're like, what's that? I'm like, well, there's something in that. You, ever read, you, know, you can read stuff into that, you know. So it's, it's really exciting. So that's, uh, that's that. And then, yeah, I know, it just goes on. It's like amazing. I was, I was having such a great time with that project. So that's that. I think uh, anybody else? Does anybody else? Want? Yes. Do you manufacture the apparel or do you I license do, your art? I do. No, I um, manufacture. My, my partner has an arrangement with a company in uh, Toronto, and they they do all the uh, manufacturing for us. So it's 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 not licensed. It's um, you know we own the company and we mm -hmm. raise it up that way. You know, yeah, which is a little bit harder, like mountain to climb. You know, because right. otherwise you know just get rid of it, let them handle it. So this way we're like, uh, but I think the payoff is going to be better. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. Any uh, thoughts about like, trying to get back into animation? I know you were talking about that. Before. Yeah. Uh, you know what, it's come so far, and these guys, I mean, like, like I'm looking at, like, you look at, like, kids coming out of SVA, and they're doing, like, Pixar quality, like, shorts on YouTube, you know, I'm like, I can't catch up with that, man. It's like a whole different <laughs> realm, you know? And it's, and it's so great, you know, I just love it, you know, I love, I love Pixar, I love everything those guys do, you know. So, it's, I, I admire, I'm, I'm a great admirer of animation now, you know. And, uh. Anybody else? Is that? I guess we're good, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we just wanted to thank you all for coming, and specifically Dan for coming down oh, and talking to us. Um, Jay Muldoon for coming from Borough Council, Tyreen Ruder, um, who let us have the space in the building. Um, and Grace Shackney coming from the Arts Council. So thank you all for coming. There's uh, food and beverages, and please enjoy and have time to talk to Dan. <laughs>